Is he recording? I can see the screen! Yo, what's up guys? Big news! It's very jam in Cheras! Nothing new, right? Because it's always jam in Cheras. It's early in the morning. Well, it's not really early. It's, it's, it's 9 ish. It's almost 10 actually. It looks very gloomy, it looks very early because it's going to rain. Another big news Jisima is vlogging. Jisima is vlogging! Yeah, for the very first time, I'm vlogging. Uh, as, you, as you guys know, our YouTube channel has got a lot of playlists, right? And um, most of those stuff that we do are, are very proper, very polished and all that. So we thought of, well, let's do something a bit more casual, a bit more easier to churn out for you guys. A bit longer, a bit unpolished, a bit um, chin chai. So yeah, if you go on to our playlist now. Yeah, this is like the sixth time the suction went off. Uh, go on to our YouTube channel, we have a new playlist, it's called uh, Auto Vlogs. Uh, I suppose this video will be the third one. First one was uh, Eugene in Thailand, and the second one was the Medica video by Adrian. So we are going to create something a bit different, a bit, um, a bit um, casual and, and easy to digest, yeah? Another big news! Apparently, I am the chosen one. Yeah, so that's exactly the words that came from Touch and Go, yeah? It says, congratulations, you are one of the chosen ones. Yes, so I'm actually on the way to um, Touch and Go Center to get my RFID fixed, fitted to my car uh, as one of the pilot testing program thing. And this is the seventh time! Yeah, so a few weeks back, Touch and Go sort of uh, made an announcement saying that oh, to those who are interested to be in one of the to be one of the pilot tester for the um, what you call that RFID program, uh, do sign up, which I did because we are Kepo Chinese. A few of us in the office as well, we did that and we set an appointment to do the fitment. So basically, the process to do that. Now, I'm not sure whether it is the same process as when it is launched uh, for the mass uh, users, right? So first, I had to download the e-wallet app from Touch and Go. So downloaded it. Um, now, I'm going to show you later. Downloaded it. Um, first, register, create an account, um, and then go on to the Touch and Go website for the RFID registration. It's pretty weird because it, they sort of somehow not linked. I've registered in the e-wallet app, went on to the Touch and Go RFID website, and I have to rekey in some of the information which I've already keyed in in the e-wallet. So Touch and Go do, yeah, talk to each other, yeah, RFID and e-wallet. You have the e-wallet registered, um, putting some money in there. Oh, by the way, if you register an account for the e-wallet, and if you top up within 24 hours, you get five ringgit for free in your account. So basically, I topped up 20 ringgit because I'm a cheapo. I topped up 20 ringgit and within 24 hours, no, uh, within a day or two, I got 5 ringgit uh, added on into my account. So that's good. So I got 25 bucks to use. Register it and after that, um, make an appointment. So there, there, there were a few choices on uh, the, the Touch and Go centers that we can go on to do the fitment. Now, before all that, what's RFID, right? Uh, for you guys who don't know, RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. So basically, um, there are two components uh, in this, this high, in how it works. So you have this uh, RFID tag placed onto your car, which is a sticker, and there's a reader at the toll booth. So it's a bit like smart tag, but you don't have to worry about batteries. You don't have to worry about uh, losing your car. Don't have to worry about losing your smart tag, I suppose. Uh, there's a sticker onto uh, that's stuck to your car, and apparently the sticker has to be on the headlight or on the windscreen. It's not inside the headlight or inside the car on the windscreen. Yeah, it's outside, which is pretty weird because um, it seems like the sticker has to be in line of sight with the reader at the tow booth. Um, RFID, right? Um, if you guys know, it's been used in many, many, many um, different kind of usage. You have RFID tag or chip in your pet, like a dog, or in if you have a farm, if you have like a lot bunch of goats, you have RFID tag on your goats so that you can keep track of your um, livestock and have the have them counted when they come back to your kandang, right? So 
you also have RFID on your passport as well. Um, discovery of the day, do, 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 did you know Malaysia is the first country to have e-passport? So the e-passport has RFID chip in it. So we were the first to have e-passports in 1998. Yeah, Those things work as um, by using frequency. It is not like uh, infrared where you have to look eye, eye to eye and, and get it scanned and all that. So it's, it's, it's using radio frequency. So I'm not sure why it has to be displayed out on your car outside. Um, so I'm going to find out from them later. Those who have been using smart tech, you guys know how difficult life is, right, with smart tags. In a week's time, Within a week, you face all sorts of uh, disruptions while going past tow booth, either on your own or because of the idiot in front of you for not displaying the smart tech properly or not having batteries or not having enough money in the car and all that. So it's it's like, ah, oh, please, 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 let me through, let me through, let me through, let me through, let me through. Oh, okay, yes. Done. Success. This thing. So now let me show you the touch and go e-wallet app while I'm stuck in the jam, right? Um, this is the e-wallet, so you get your balance in there. So what you do is you just download the app, register an account and, and do an upload of reload of an amount that you like using um, credit card or your online banking and stuff like that. One of the functions is to, to, to pay for stuff. Apparently, I think you can do it in Watson and, and a few other places where you can just pay for stuff like um, Alipay. I don't think it works like Samsung Pay because it's, I think it's through barcode and stuff. So today I'm bringing my own car. I have my cert, um, vehicle cert ready, and on the way there. Um. So you need my IC. You need my code for the copy. Oh, just the copy. Okay now, so these are the guys from Touch and Go uh, and uh, what's the company name again? Oh, Quatris. Quatris and Quatris, the guys that uh, arrange for all this fitment. So, we're gonna start the process. We're gonna show you guys how it works. So as mentioned earlier, the, it has to be done on the headlamp or on top of the windscreen. So first they need to put it on and get it tested this way to make sure it works first. So one of the reasons why they, they don't put it uh, in the windscreen is because the tin will sort of uh, interfere with the radio frequency and all that. So it has to be outside the car. And the sticker only works on glass surface. Yeah? So in other words, it has to be really smooth surface. And some say, some of you guys, I'm sure you will ask why don't they put it on the bumper? Uh, the bumper is not really smooth surface, so it wouldn't work. So that's how it looks like. It's just a strip, yeah? So it's just a strip of uh, magnetic uh, film. And this lady here, do the test. Right, so, bila dia okay tu, dia tunjuk smiley ke apa? Hmm. Bukan dia dapat dia tag keluar dia punya number. Dia yeah, frequency ke apa? Oh, nombor. Ah, nombor dia, dia punya tag ID. Tag ID tu. Ah, okay. okay. Alright. Dalam masa 24 jam, kita akan hantar SMS ah. untuk activate dia lah. Ah. Ah. So, biasanya dalam... Satu jam. Satu jam siap lah. Satu jam dah. Radio wave come from the uh, reader. Yeah. It, it comes like, like this. Yeah. Like the radio wave. Yeah. And it bounces back. Yeah, and it gives the ID of the of the sticker. Okay. So the ID is already tagged to your car and your account. Yeah. Uh, at the back end. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. How it works. So it's really that simple, yeah. So it's just a strip of uh, of this this chip and um, antenna they call it, and that's it. We are done. Okay. So there's, there's, all, there's no money inside there. Yeah, yeah, guys, no money inside, yeah, please don't steal it and put it in your car. In fact, if you steal it, right, you will break the antenna, you will break everything, it doesn't work. So do not steal it, right? There's no money in there. Nama, nama penuh. Alright, thank you. you. Okay, nama. As mentioned earlier as well, this has no value or no money in it. And if you were to remove it and try to put it on your car, it doesn't work. 
But if that were to happen to me and somebody to remove it, I can actually come back and get it replaced. Apparently this thing is not very expensive. So it's going on for free now. Uh, now. Not sure when they will, they will charge later on for replacement and all that. One of the reasons why they don't put it on the windscreen, even if you put it on the windscreen, it has to be on the outside, yeah? So on the outside, you have to avoid where the, the wipers go because the wiper will sort of destroy it, right? So if you were to put it up here around this area or in the middle, it's, it's, very, it's too near to the metal area and the metal sort of will interfere with the radio frequency as well. And if you put it in the middle, well, cars with rain sensors or radar and, and, and all this uh, uh, lane detection, lane keeping and all this technology will also disrupt those things. So really guys, don't complain for sake of complaining. This is uh, the normal practice. In a lot of countries, they do this. They put it on windscreen or they put it on the headlights. Um, really, if, if there's no reason why anyone would want to steal it, I can foresee that will happen with uh, weathering. Rain, hot, dust, sand, stone chip and all that that sort of uh, destroy the adhesive and um, or maybe break the antenna or the chip because of stone chip, then you can just come back and replace it. No issue at all. So um, what I need to do now is wait for the SMS to confirm that I can use it already. Uh, it's been about 10, 15 minutes, I suppose. Still no SMS. Okay, rejoining Max Highway. Using the old method. Ah, see? This is what I'm talking about. Smart tech, right? Sangkut. Is that you or somebody else? Sure, sangkut. Uh, I did ask them as well. Oh, I just my uh, yeah, the tank has just been fitted on, and what if it rains the minute after that? Uh, they mentioned it's fine. It wouldn't shouldn't come off, and if anything were to happen to it, it peels off or anything, I can always go back. So just need to wait for the SMS. Once I have the SMS, I will hunt down a my RFID toll booth and do a shot. Passing through it. Yeah. Okay, now I'm back on the road. Um, I've received the SMS to tell me that my RFDF, RFID is ready to be used as it has been activated. It took about less than two hours to get it activated. That's fine. I'm back on the road, back into another jam. It was done at around 11 a.m. and I got the SMS at about 1 p.m. So it's uh, still okay because uh, on paper it's said to be 24 hours to get ready. So now it's ready to be tested. I've got my camera pointing frontwards. Um, so what I need to do now is to hunt down a few toll booth with RFID lanes. Okay, let's have a look. Yes, there is a hybrid lane, uh, which is a my RFID and touch and go lane. So let's see how it goes, yeah? Okay, I hope there's no one in front of me. Yes, there's no one in front of me. I'm gonna slow down a bit. Let's see. How fast is it gonna react? Let's hope that it works. Let's hope that it works. It works! <laughs> it's it's kind of amazing. Without having to, you know, hold on to the smart tag, without having to worry. It works, but it's a bit slow. So you must slow down. You must still slow down for it. Now now I'm curious how it looks on my e-wallet. Yes, my toll charge was two ringgit. Yeah, I spent two ringgit making this video for you guys. Come on, man. I'm gonna look for more tolls. I'm gonna spend more money. Now, next toll. Where am I actually? Okay, now look, we are now on Kasas Highway towards Shalom. Kasas, do you have a yes? So this is a very good example. We have a dedicated RFID lane. So we see how it works, yeah? Hopefully this can work faster because it's not a hybrid lane with touch and go. I'm not, okay, let me just see how fast I'm going. Um, okay, I'm going at, okay, let's say 40, yeah? Okay, I'm going at 40. No, I'm going, uh, I'm not at 30. It doesn't work. <laughs> oh my God, it doesn't work. Was that too fast? I was going at 30 actually. Okay, now. <laughs> this is just like smart tech. Okay, 
So it just shows that you can't enter the tow booth too fast. The reader needs some time to communicate with the tag. So I was going at about, I was slowing down from 40 to about 30. So I suppose any speed below 30 should be safe. So I'm gonna spend a bit more money going through a few more tolls and see how it works. Uh, it's the speed. Let's slow it down a bit, okay? Don't get too excited. It is uh, not the kind that you can just zoom past, give the reader some time to just read your tag on the headlight. This is the day where we go for a joy ride, for a joy ride, right? Okay, now approaching Subang Toll. Oh, it's actually called Toll Sunway. This us. RFID Lane, okay. We did, I was doing 40 km per hour, slowing down to 30. Let's try 30 km per hour, slowing down to 20, okay? No, break a bit more, in case there's no one right in front of me. Let's try that. Wow, 30 is really slow. Okay, 30. Entering at 30, slowing down from 30. Barely. I barely made it. Okay, that was okay actually. I was doing, I was entering at about 30 km per hour, slowing down to about 20. And I was really getting quite close to the barrier. I guess to be safe, you have to do about 20 km per hour. That's not fun anymore, isn't it? That's fun. Another jam. I'm gonna make a U-turn and join them. <laughs> so fun. <coughs> oh, actually the jam is caused by all these clang people lah. Look, all these clang people. Okay, now, RFID. Um, dedicated booth. Let's try 20 km per hour and see how far is it uh, uh, from the barrier to the car when the barrier opens. Right? So, I'm entering at 20. Oh, this is really slow. 20. But it works. It works. That's the whole point, right? So, summary is go in at 20 and it works. Go in at 40, you have to reverse. Yeah, it works. It's pretty cool. Never been happier to pay tolls like that. I've been paying tolls for no reasons, up and down like that. It's been like, what, eight, six bucks? Yeah. I've used like eight bucks trying to show you guys how this thing works. Eight bucks. Lapan ringgit, oh, banyak, oh. Those are the transactions that happen. So you can track it, which is pretty cool, yeah? I like that. Okay, approaching another toll. Let's try this again, yeah? Um, dedicated toll, not like you can go any faster than, than 30. Um, I'm gonna try 30 again. Let's see how it works, right? 20 works. Uh, 20 works, confirm. Okay, I'm going at 30. 30 slowing down to 20, you actually need to break when you are reaching the barrier. So it's not, well, I won't take the risk lah, alright? So go in at 20. Uh, I hope they're gonna, they're gonna improve this so that the entering speed into the tow booth is, is a bit faster. I don't think those barriers were any further than the rest. There is one dedicated lane at Grand Saga Highway has the barrier pushed further in front. I think that would, would actually help the, 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 the whole transaction better. So yeah, that's about it. We passed through one, two, three, four, five. Five tolls. One unsuccessful one, but four successful ones. So it's a pass. Well, the one that was not successful was because I was entering at about 40 kilometers per hour down to 30. So that didn't work. I would say from 30, anything below 30 is fine. 20 is super safe. It definitely works. Uh, I'm gonna try out a bit more on, on different different tolls and all that. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, I'm done. Hong Kong. Go home. Play my daughter. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm about to reach this toll where I told you the barrier got extended out a bit for the RFID lane. So we're gonna test that out before I leave. Plenty of cars at the toll area, lining up for a touch and go. Smart tech. But well, the who's here? The one with the my RFID tag. I'm gonna go past the dedicated toll booth without any traffic at all. Hey, hey. there's a whole reason why I signed up for the pilot program. Ha! <sighs> oh, let's try. Okay, we go slow. Oh, we go at 30. Let's try to go at 30. Okay, look how far that barrier is. Yes! So it is confirmed that the barrier is actually further out. So you can go at 30 kilometers per hour. 
whatever that we tried earlier at Kersas, right, the barriers were a bit too near. So at 30 kilometers per hour, you almost touching the barrier already. So this is actually very good. Just a very simple solution. Just move the boom gate further out a bit more so that we can come in a bit faster. Yeah, touch and go, please. Let's do that. One of our team member, Andrew, yeah, credit to Andrew, he mentioned that uh, this RFID should be used in parkings as well. Right, don't you think that's a good idea? Imagine going to Mid Valley without having to look for your touch and go or take out the ticket and all that. You just drive in with the tag on your headlight and with the reader reading it. And that's it. Brilliant, isn't it? But, but, what if I've gone into the parking lot with a tag, all right? It's red, good to go, went in, do, do my shopping, watch a movie and all that, come back out, and the tag is missing because some idiot took it off. What happened next? Yeah, let's discuss this. Will this work for parking? If it, you know, if there's a solution to this, right, I think it is, it's, it's almost like a, a ecosystem that should work with this RFID. Um, oh wait, MACD drive through. <laughs> MACD drive through with a reader on top, place your order, however much that is, pass through another, another gate with the reader and just pay for it. Isn't that a good idea? What else? What else? Okay, think of something uh, that RFID is going to be useful for. Leave it in the comment section below. Uh, share with us some interesting ones. Maybe, maybe Touch and Go. Well, if you guys are watching this Touch and Go, take it into consideration. MACD, well, that's a brilliant idea, isn't it? Right? So if you guys were to run that using RFID at your drive through which I think is brilliant, okay? All right, thank you, that's it. Yep, I'm now in another jam. How exciting. <laughs> Bye.